we're back, fishes. We're so stoked to have you on this. We call this banjo breakdown. Tell me about first hearing about the banjo minnow the first time and what you loved about it and what you caught about, caught with it. So the first time I heard about the banjo minnow was early 90s. Uh, I used to always watch TV shows, Bill Dance, and a commercial would come on. Boom, banjo minnow across the screen. And in the uh, advertising, you would always see him catching fish. So it caught my attention. And like I said, when I, when I was a kid, I would fish with my dad. I would use worms and they would just sit at the dock and do their thing. And I would get 10, 11 years old and I, I would want my own thing to do. So I would say, hey, can you get me a lure so I can take a walk and I don't have to keep coming back for bait. So eventually I came home from school one day. Open the door up, boom, kitchen table. There's the banjo minnow sitting there, whole case of it. I was so happy. So that weekend we went out fishing. I do remember that. And I remember using a banjo minnow all weekend and I caught a ton of fish that weekend. <laughs> and tell me all the ways that you rigged the banjo minnow that day. The right. banjo minnow, like the classic ways to rig it was you would put the corkscrew in the top with a hook in it. And that was just a regular way to fish it. Or you can fish it weedless corkscrew hook and then you would put a gum band down to the barb of the hook on the uh, banjo minnow the hook they supplied and mm -hmm. then other ways i would do it would be a texas rig to where i would get it deeper and just a different presentation for the fish you know they get tired of seeing the same thing and in pittsburgh here a lot of the water we had here was rivers and i would fish the rivers a lot and we would fish for walleye and smallmouth bass and the way i would rig them for our rivers you couldn't really rig them the, or, the original way because like the fish would short strike them and they would bite it off a lot. So I came up with using a jig head and instead of rigging it this way, where you, classically yep. you would put the jig head in the front and then it would come out the top of the lure. Boom. There it is. <laughs> and then you did this. I like to do, yeah, I would rig it sideways. So whenever you would bring it in this way, you would get the wave action rather than a, a side to side juking action. And to That's me, the like way I like to fish it. Right. And I would call it tickling the fish because you would have a lot more action to it. And <laughs> I don't, it just seemed to work a lot better. What's your favorite color? Do you remember? Uh, well, my favorite color here was silver. Silver. Just because, uh, like I, I said, whenever I was a kid, we would bass fish a lot and, yeah. classically bass fish and if you're using live bait you're using shiners yep shiners are silver so yep. i would basically match the hatch yep match they would the be hatch. using shiners i would use the banjo minnow right next to them and i would keep up with them it was great all right i'm gonna show you something here okay sweet look at that <laughs> the, see yeah. i like how soft they are they're so soft and they have so much action like look at it it literally folds over on itself it's so soft that's what's really unique about it. talk about the fact that it has this lifelike action but it comes from this soft plastic because i can sit here and do this all day long james but you know what i'm talking about tell, Absolutely. tell other fishermen Absolutely. why this is so amazing the, the, it's just that, like I said, I like how durable it is. It's soft, but you can catch a couple of fish on it. Like if you would grab it, pull it a little bit, you could see how durable it is. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's crazy. Like you don't get that in soft plastics. That, that'll last you five, six, ten fish on that thing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, another thing was rigging it. it one, if you rig it, you could have two different actions on. You have it juking. You can have it side to side. Go like this. Uh, it, it's just so like versatile. This. I could speak on it all day long on how, how versatile it is. Even different species as well. Uh, yeah. Another thing you could do is what I used to do was I would cast it out under a bobber to get more distance on it, but to keep it on the surface. So, like, we would see fish eating on the surface. They would chase minnows up. You'd see the explosion on top of the water. Oh, man, I got a banjo minnow on. How ca I can't get it that far without me putting weight on it and it's sinking to the bottom so i would you put a float and then i would fish it you know six eight ten inches under it and i would twitch that across the surface and i i mean you know how soft that is all that's doing is under the surface just moving yep. along looking like a wounded bait fish and I, I had success on it it was great oh that's a great that's a great idea i never i never thought about doing that you know i i've i've fished the banjo minnow for tarpon 
in, okay. the, in the Florida Keys. And that was one of the, that's a great suggestion because you get up on tarp and you can spook them really quick, quickly, but it, but you want to be on the top. And it was always that distance issue. I totally understand yep. what you're saying. Right. And another thing you could use with saltwater with that would be the, uh, the, the bobbers that they have, they call them popping bobbers they use for redfish and the trout. Mm-hmm. So you could have that bobber on the top sliding back and forth, making a small wake. And then you have your bait behind it. I mean, that's just, that's a win-win situation right there. I'm going to show you something. You'll be able to relate to this. Look okay. at, what we did, look at, we, look, look at what we did to the nose. Okay. It's blunt now rather than a right. point. And the reason is now it's easier to get the corkscrew in. And we have these holographic eyes. Yes. That, that glitter in the sunlight, but also this little blunt makes it super, super easy for the corkscrew to go in, but also creates a little resistance. So yes. there's resistance in the front and it gives you more action in the back. I see that. I, I, I like the blunt nose too, because it, it, I mean, a lot of guys, they're not fishing a hundred days out of the year. There's a lot of guys that are fishing just weekends yeah. and that's a lot easier for them to put the corkscrew in and be accurate and consistent with yeah. it to where you're not ruining baits. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know what it's like is sometimes you got to sometimes in the old kit, you had to do it once or twice or three times just to get it right. 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 Absolutely. Well, and another thing I noticed is like you can a lot, like if you catch a fish and they rip them super glue, a little dab of super glue, put it back together. It'll stay great. Really, really love for you to lose these little minnows to get some of those toad trout. In those Listen, steelhead. I, uh, now, what size are they now? Are they two, two and a half? We have a large, a medium, and a small. So there's okay. a three inch, four and a half, and five and a half. Okay. Three, three inch would work absolutely yeah. perfect for them. Yeah. I, can, I cannot wait. Oh, I'd love for you to get some big trout. I can, I'll get that. you some pictures and some footage. Don't worry. Yeah. So, so um, James, for people who are learning about the banjo minnow for the first time, or for you like yourself, you are one of the originals. What do you say to people who, who, who think, oh, it's just one of those gimmick TV lures. It can't really work. What do you say to people who think that? The, my, my, the best thing I would say to that is, is would be give it a chance. I mean, there's so many soft plastics on a market now, but the banjo minnow is the only one that has that shape to it. And a lot of times, if say I'm fishing for big fish, mm-hmm. they want the profile. Like they love that profile. They target big fish. That's what they like. But there's a, a lot of times where like you, you want the trout. I'm going to give you some trout picks. They, I'm going to fish it like that because... Yeah. Uh, in, in Erie, a lot of the times the water, it's low and clear. So a lot of times I'm sight fishing fish. So I'll cast it in front of it, bring it right past their face, and you'll see the aggressive one come right out of the pack and hammer it. Oh, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> it's going to be cool. I cannot, I cannot wait. That You remember Wayne Hockmeyer, the guy in the original infomercial. Remember him? Yes. So he and I went up to Niagara Falls. Okay. And... and we went into the falls and, and used the banjamin exactly like you're saying on a profile and caught big, big salmon, uh, big fish. So yeah. They're fun. I love salmon. I just got yeah. back from New York catching them. When you saw that the banjo minnow was relaunching and coming back out, what was your response? What did you think? Uh, I, I was pretty excited about it. I was excited because all the success I had back in the 90s on it when I was a kid. And I know so much more now about fishing rather than when I was 10 years old. I'm almost 40 now. So that's 30 plus more years of experience. And I just, I know what kind of damage I could do with the banjo (laughs) minute now on the water. (laughs) So James, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We cannot wait wait for you to use it. Get us some nice big um, trout picks. So James, a lot of people come to our, website a lot of people come to our social media how would people get in contact with you and follow you how, give me your handles give me all the, your the best handles. so on uh, on instagram it is steel city anglers it's actually steel underscore city underscore anglers underscore and then 412 yep. that's my yep. personal page on instagram tons of fish on there tons of content 
And on Facebook, it is Steel City Anglers as well on Facebook. And we are out of Pittsburgh. Awesome. 